morning, friends. I'll pray. We'll begin. Our Father in heaven, bless us as we uh, go in pursuit of the truth. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're giving study to the uh, health evangelist crucified between two thieves. Um, commercialism and our subject today, professionalism. The great dangers. Overall theme is balance, finding balance, not being out of balance. Uh, ready to start. I'll read first. Albert Einstein, arguably one of the most brilliant men that has ever walked the earth. You know, as far as secular things go. Einstein said, it is a miracle that curiosity survives formal education. Yeah, that's, I quote Einstein, okay? Now I quote the Bible, Matthew 15, verse 9. Uh, In vain they do worship me. Teaching for doctrines, what? The commandments of men. Matthew 15, verse 2. Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? It is a miracle anybody survives formal education. About the midst of the feast, feast by the way, let me, let me just say, the, the, the best teacher, the highest teacher, John 6, 45, they shall be taught of God. Luke 12, 12, taught by the Holy Ghost. Luke 11, 1, taught by Jesus. The Godhead as the teachers in the classroom. So John 7, 14. Now, I'll start asking you questions. You can give answers. About the midst of the feast, Jesus went up to the temple. What did he go to do? What did he go to do? Is he still teaching in the temple today? Yeah, Habakkuk 2.20, the Lord is in His holy temple. Is He teaching? Yes. He hasn't changed one bit. Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ is saying, Yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3.6, I am the Lord, I change not. Uh, Mad James 1.17, with whom there is no variable, neither shadow nor turning. He still is teaching today. What's He teaching us today? Can I give an answer? Lessons on higher education. Mm -hmm. Is that okay to say that? Mm -hmm. Because that's make or break for the health evangelist. Now, who'd like to read Christian experience? Um, Go ahead, somebody. Jesus' manner of teaching was beautiful and attractive, and it was ever characterized by simplicity. Is yours. Mm -hmm. Now, it says it was beautiful, but not to everybody. When the Pharisees looked at him, Isaiah 53, verse 2, there was no beauty in him that we should desire him. When they looked at Jesus, they saw what? Uh, Ugly. Yes, yes, and yes, (laughs) ugly. No no beauty, absence of beauty equals ugly. No beauty in him. A root out of dry ground, the first part of the verse. That's not how it's supposed to be. Uh, That's not how it's supposed to be. That's the fruit of false higher education. You look at Christ and you say, John 1, 11, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. That's ugly. Yeah, so this morning, this is a danger for health evangelism, right? Crucified between professionalism on one side, commercialism on the other. Well, uh, John seven fifteen. 15. Uh, I'm going to give you the NI version next. This is the, the King James. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Now, it wasn't because there was a lack of power, just a lack of education. Mm-hmm. Right? Luke 4, 32, what did they say? They were astonished at his doctrine, because he spoke with what? Power. There was no lack of power, mm-hmm. just lack of what? Yeah. Education. Now, there's from the NIV. The people were, somebody read. Sister Kayla? The people were surprised when they heard him. How does he know so much when he hasn't been trained? Mm. What are they saying? He doesn't have a degree. He doesn't have a degree. He didn't go to school. (laughs) He didn't go to school. You know. (laughs) The the, the people were surprised. (laughs) People were surprised. But we're looking at this from, a, from, a, from the world's point of view, okay? Because the danger of getting leavened with professionalism isn't coming from heaven. It's coming from the earth. 
So the people were surprised, and so were the palace guards. In uh, John chapter 7, they said, guards, go get him. Handcuffs and chains and bring him back. They came back, John 7, 46, never a man spake like this man. They were surprised at what he said too. But they found beauty where the Pharisees found ugly. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is our subject this morning. I'm ready to start. Was Jesus a professional? Yeah. Let's define. Well, let's define it first. Let's define it first. A, what is a professional? You go first, and I'll read from Webster's. Put it in your own words. What's a professional? I need a professional. <laughs> what is it? An expert in the in field. Okay, expert in the field is good. Someone that knows what they're doing. Knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have your appendix removed, do you want a professional on the job? Oh, yeah. Somebody that knows what they're doing, an expert in their field? Yes. Mm -hmm. I went to Webster's, a job that requires special education, Good. training, or yeah, skill done by a person who works in that particular profession. Next question. What was Jesus' profession? Okay. <laughs> All right, let me go first. You go second. <laughs> you go third. Uh, he, was a, he was a carpenter. Yeah. Of course, we say in the Bible, we say today, we don't say carpenter, he's a builder. You know, he's a builder. Was he a good builder? Yes. What did he build? Everything. Hebrews 11.10, Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. Psalms 127 verse 1, unless the Lord, unless God builds the city, they that labor, labor in vain. Does he know how to build? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Was he a professional carpenter? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, somebody read the first sentence. Jesus did not use his physical powers and wrestling, but in such a way as to keep them in health that he might do the best work in every line. Every line. He had a dual purpose in his life, right? He was a, an A number one carpenter. And he was no halfway soul savior, right? Mm -hmm. Never was. He was not willing to be defective, even in the handling of tools. Sister uh, Marie, you want to continue? He was perfect as a workman, as he was perfect in character. Keep going. By his own example, he taught that it is our duty to be industrious, that our work should be performed with exactness and and that such labor is honorable. Honorable. Now, uh, uh, Hebrews 13, 4, marriage is honorable in all, and the marriage bed undefiled. But when you get married, it comes with a lot of dirty dishes too, right? So it's good to be a good husband, but be good to be a good dishwasher. You know, you don't want to marry a man that won't wash the dishes, do you ladies? Nobody said anything. No, no. Now, uh, he was not willing to, he was a good dishwasher, it's right on the list, right? You know, he was not, a, not defective with his tools. He was not a halfway worker. Deuteronomy 6, 5, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, because Ecclesiastes 9, verse 10, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with the, all your mind. Yeah, this is how he was on the job. This is how the health evangelism has to be. Now, Einstein again, if that's okay. <laughs> is, is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> right, somebody read Einstein for us. The only thing that interferes with my learning is my education. It almost sunk me. <laughs> it's the only thing that almost d d did me in, you know? Yeah. The father of physics. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe Newton was. Newtonian physics. But maybe, maybe he is kind of like the son of, of uh, Newton. Einstein and Newton. Ah, their education about killed him, they said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, that is a picture of. Troubled sea. Yeah, troubled sea. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of John Wesley? Mm -hmm. He occupies a nice part of the great controversy in that book. And John Wesley was on a boat on a troubled sea. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to read some of this and ask some questions here. Uh, Life of the Reverend John Wesley, page 10. I had long before, quoting Wesley, I had long before observed the great seriousness of their behaviors, the Moravians. This account is in the book, Great Controversy. Of their humility 
they had given continual proof by performing those servile offices for the other passengers, which none of us, the Englishmen, none of the English would undertake, for which they desired and would receive no pay, saying it was good for their proud hearts. The loving Savior had done more for them. Wesley's about to see his education had failed him because the Moravians knew something that what? He did not know. Every day had, had given them occasion of showing a meekness which no injury could move. If they were pushed, struck, or thrown about, they rose again and went away, but no complaint was found in their mouth. There was now an opportunity of trying whether they were delivered from the spirit of fear as well as from that of pride, anger, and revenge. So guess what happened? To test them. The boat, the storm came, right? Mm -hmm. What did the Englishman do? <laughs> in the midst of the psalm wherewith their service began, the sea broke over, split the mainsail in pieces, covered the ship, and poured in between the decks as if the great deep had already swallowed us up. A terrible screaming began among the English. English. The Germans, the Moravians, calmly sang on. <laughs> I asked one of them afterwards, were you not afraid? He answered, by the way, the crisis had, avi had, had revealed their abundance of faith mm -hmm. and revealed his lack. Mm -hmm. Were you not afraid, he answered. I thank God, no, I ask. But were not your women and children afraid? He replied mildly, no, our women and children are not afraid to die. Amen. Wow. And then uh, in the great controversy, Wesley asked the Moravians if he could come and live with them and learn righteousness by faith because his education had undone him. Now, remember that, that, that you know those verses, Isaiah 28, line upon line, precept upon precept. I'll tell you what I think they also mean. Luke Keith's opinion here is that when you see verses in the Bible, you look at their relationship one to another. This verse sits adjacent to that. You ought to read what's before and what's after. Mm -hmm. So let's very carefully, Matthew 6, 22, and try to get the understanding. The light of the body is the eye. Um. <laughs> The eye is not the light of the body. The eye is where the light goes into the body. I mean, I realize it's going to retina, retina nerves being flipped upside down by the photoreceptor cells in the retina and going back to the optic nerve to the brain, but it goes into the eyes. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, then your body is full of light. In other words, you've got to be careful what you see. All right, you got to be careful what you see. You got to be careful what you see. Now, we're going to John 8 12. You back up to John 8 11. No man, Lord, woman, where are those thine accusers? Verse 11, no man, Lord, doth no man condemn thee, neither do I. Then he said, What? Sin Go and sin no more. Now, then verse 12. Then spake Jesus again, I am the light of the world. This is the verse after John 8, 11, go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. And then he said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. darkness. Be careful what you See. and what should you be looking at. The light, which is Jesus. Thank you. John 1, 4, in him was life and the life was the light of men. Got to be careful who you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Now, if your education came from God... Well, you got a good deal. But if it came from man, you better do some striving to overcome it before it overcomes you. That's what Einstein said. I just, I just strung out Einstein's short, brief remark. John 9, 39. This is the chapter that follows John 8. The subject remains the same. Who read for us? And Jesus said, For judgment I am coming to this world, for but they, they keep going, which see not might see, and they, and that they which see might be made blind. I can see just fine. In him there was no beauty that I should desire him. Mm -hmm. I can see, but he's about to make me what? Blind. 
because I was looking at the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I don't see a thing. Blind Bartimaeus, what did he say? Son of David, have mercy on me. You're a blind man. I'm about to make you what? See. And then he said, John 9, 25. John 9, I once was blind, but now I see. I came to make you, if you're blind, to see. And you can see, I'm going to make you blind. Mm -hmm. And he's speaking what? In a spiritual, John 6, 63, my words are spirit, a spiritual sense. Spiritual eyes have. The Pharisees like to look on thee. You got a degree. But Jesus looked on the 1 Samuel 16, 7. Yeah. Is this a great danger to being a health evangelist? Yes. And if I can be more specific, somebody would say you got to have a master of public health to be a medical missionary. Where in the world did you get that? Wow. Thank God. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you, got, you got to have the masters of public health. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll buy that. Yeah. But you look at John 8, John 9, John 6, how they're lined up and the way they're put together. That's coming. It's a homework assignment that's coming. Not today. But that one's coming too. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Now, Council's on Health 506. I know somebody's dying to read this because when you read that, I've got, I need a volunteer to read this and I've got a question for you after you read it. Come on, somebody read. It is important that everyone who is to act as a medical missionary be skilled in ministering to the soul as well as to the body. Okay. It is important that everyone is to act as a medical missionary. What's your profession? Okay. Is that the right answer she gave? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody should be a medical missionary. Mm -hmm. Now, give me the Bible verses. There it is. John 13, 15. I've given you an example that you should do as I have done. Well, who gave that example? Councils on Health 395? Yeah. Christ, the come on, is our example. Yeah, I've given you an example. Uh, John, uh, John 13, 13, you call me Master and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I have what? Washed? And you ought to what? Wash my feet. And that's my example. Okay. Is that medical missionary work? Mm -hmm. Yes. He is the pattern man. He is the archetype medical missionary. In him, there is nothing but beauty. When he spoke, his words were beautiful, attractive, and simple. simple. Now, everything I just said, I'd like to show you a picture of it. It's going to take about 12 pictures, though. This is southern Russia. And uh, I was invited to go see a project in the making, building a sanitarium. And I've seen lots of sanitariums being built before. You know. Here's a lady uh, that's in charge. She was actually the health and temperance a lady in, in the, in the uh, conference down there. I think that's her mother. And they had the blue bricks, the things you would expect to see. And there's a, this, they're working on the septic tank. That's her husband down there digging, and he's telling me what they're doing. Translated, because it's all Russian. And uh, then I got my surprise. And yeah, my mind... I was like Wesley. <laughs> I got to go stay with the Moravians and learn something here. And this is what I learned there. This lady said, would you like to see our lifestyle center? And I said, well, I thought you're building it. She said, oh, no, no, we, we, it's up and running. I said, uh, yeah, let me see it. And she opened the door and I looked inside and that's what I saw. By the way, this is Russia, right? Cold in the winter's air. They got some plywood, this press board knocked together about seven or eight rooms and started taking guests. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a medical missionary work is the, what's that word again? Pioneer, pioneer work. Abraham was a pioneer, right? Get ye out of your father's house, Hebrews 12, two, uh, Genesis 12, verse 2. Now, 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 now. Was Abraham a professional? Was he highly skilled? No. Uh, Romans, 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 not by the world's standards. correct, not by 
the world standards. Mm -hmm. But Abraham, Romans 4, 3, believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham was, let me say he was a professional. Was he a pioneer? Mm -hmm. He went where no man had gone before, mm -hmm. no son of Jehovah. He went to the Canaanites to give them the gospel. Abimelech, king of Shechem, these guys were not Christians. Mm -hmm. Next, he was a professional. He was a pioneer. Was he a uh, pilgrim? Mm -hmm. Hebrews eleven thirteen, a pilgrim and a stranger. Mm -hmm. Was Jesus? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when he told, we talked yesterday about a spiritual Jew, John 8, 39, if you were the children of Abraham, you would do the works. God's calling you to be a professional, a pioneer, and a pilgrim. That means you go places others are not willing to go. And you do something others are unable to do. Medical missionary work is the pioneer, pioneering work. Read the next two sentences, please. It is to be connected with the gospel ministry. It is the gospel in practice, the gospel practically carried out. That's it. That's what you can see. When you see it, that's the gospel. Jesus didn't have to say anything. His life was the gospel. And when you hated his life, you hated the gospel. Now, a question for you and me. Uh, are we pilgrims and strangers? Yes. Have you set down roots in this world? Are you working your fingers to the bone to get all of this world that you can? And that's the question for me. So as we turned away from the Lifestyle Center, I said to that lady, there's no bathroom in there. Where do people go to the bathroom? And she said, come with me, and took me there. We would call that an outhouse. Mm -hmm. See that little white thing? Mm -hmm. You know what that is? Huh? Yeah, it's a hot water heater. <laughs> they had a little hot water there. Yeah, hot water heater. It's okay, it's, that's good. Rushing in cold water is tough. <laughs> they had a hot water heater. That was their bathroom. And I said, but wait a minute. I don't see any dining facilities. Where's the dining room? And she said, come with me and took me there. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I got a tricky question coming up. That was one of the best meals I've ever had in my life. Wow. Thank you. You know what it is? Thank you. Thank you. Now, were those people professionals? Yes. Oh, yes. Nobody could do it like those Russians could. <laughs> those people were professionals. Some would look at them, and they would say, that's not professional. Mm -hmm. Would you bring the Queen of England into that place? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'd say, is she looking to find her soul? That's the best place to be, mm -hmm. right? That is exceedingly simple and accessible to Ephesians 1.6. Uh, you're accepted in the Christ was a carpenter. If you wanted to see him, was it easy to get an appointment? No, no. If Christ, you wanted to see him back in those days, could you go see him? Where would you find him? Banging away in a carpenter shop. If you want to see Donald Trump today, could you go and see him? No, no way. You call up his secretaries, secretary, secretary, secretary. I'd like to have a little conference with uh, Mr. Trump. What would they say? No, thank you. No, no. Make an appointment. Yeah, make an, make an appointment. For when? Uh, 2027? You know? No, he's accessible. There's an air of accessibility in a place like this. And it's exceeding simple, just like Christ. Ecclesiastes 5.8 is higher than the highest, and he's simpler than the simplest. You know what that's a picture of? And then I said to that lady, I said, look, I see the Lifestyle Center, the bathrooms, in the kitchen. And you're the president of the conference, the Health and Temperance? Yes. Where do you stay? Mm -hmm. Come with me. And that's what she took me to. Mm -hmm. That's her home. That lady was a professional, mm -hmm. pioneer, and a pilgrim. Thank you. That's it. Now, chapter one, 
Higher Education, the book counsels to teachers. Who'd like to read? I oranged out, I highlighted that part about our passport because don't get confused. This is not talking about Jesus' passport. This is talking about mine. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read somebody. Higher education. Higher education is the simplicity of true godliness. Our passports from the preparatory schools of earth to the higher schools of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your simplicity is your passport. Mm -hmm. Now, who's ever been out of the country? I know you have Sister Marie. You're about, yeah, you know, you're, you're out of the country. Mm -hmm. When you come and you go in the country, what's the first thing they ask for? Passport. Passport. Mm -hmm. I get to customs. I was in Jamaica. I walked up. Lady said, uh, I said, she said, uh, where's your passport? I got it here somewhere. <laughs> well, you stand aside till you find it. Because mm -hmm. you're not coming in here without it. Mm -hmm. I found it. And I handed it to her. She said, what's your religion? This is a Friday night after dark. Mm -hmm. She said, what's your, it's the only flight I can get. What's your religion? I said, I'm a seven-day Adventist. In Jamaica, one out of four is seven-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm a seven-day Adventist. You ever heard of that? She said, well, <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Everybody's seven-day. The prime minister, I think, was a seven-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a seven-day Adventist. You ever heard of that? Yeah. Are you a seven-day Adventist? Mm -hmm. And she said, if I were, I wouldn't be working right now, would I? Mm -hmm. Oh, I said, yeah, yes, man. That's right. <laughs> All right. That's right. <laughs> but you got to have your passport to go into that kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. What's your passport? See, simplicity. simplicity. Now, now, is the Godhead, can anybody explain the Godhead? I can't. Can anybody explain Psalms 90 verse 2 from everlasting to, can you explain how God's always been here? I can't either. No, it's not. Uh, great is the mist 1 Timothy 3.16. Great is the mystery of godliness, comma, that God was made manifest in the flesh. Can you explain that? No. Can you believe it? Yes. Simple faith. The passport is not being able to explain quantum physics in the kingdom of God. It's can you believe what God said? Can you believe God made the earth in seven days? Can you believe the fish swallowed up Nona? Jonah? I almost said Nona. Who's Nona? Jonah. Can you believe, can you, can you believe it? That simple faith. That's your passport. Boom. God said it. I believe it. That is naked, simple faith. Desire of Ages 453. Who'd like to read that big, long first sentence? I wondered at his knowledge of the law and the prophecy. And the question passed from one to another. How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? No one was regarded as qualified to be a religious teacher unless he had studied in the rabbinical schools, and both Jesus and John the Baptist had been represented as ignorant because they had not received this training. No passport. <laughs> no passport for the Pharisees. No passport, which means no entrance into the kingdom of God. John and Jesus, ignorant, because they had not received the Pharisees' training. In other words, not qualified to teach in Israel in the eyes of the Pharisees. Now, health evangelism. I say all that to say this. This is the problem that we face. Now, in the natural order of things, by the way, let me back up before we read that. Luke 1, right? John the Baptist had a dad, right? What was his name? Zacharias. Zacharias. What was his job? Because yeah, the angel, he was, he was in there doing the sacrifice thing. Yeah. The, the incense, when the angel appeared to him, scared him, right? He was inside the temple. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in the natural order of things, John the Baptist was going to be a what? A and be educated by who? That and that's a problem. Because Einstein barely survived his education, and John probably wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. In the natural order of things, the son of Zacharias would have been educated for the priesthood. Mm -hmm. By who? Educated by the, the priest, the rabbis. But the training of the rabbinical schools would have unfitted him for his work. Mm -hmm. And that was, the, uh, that was the forerunner, right? Malachi 4, last, last chapter of Malachi. That's the forerunner. That's the, uh, you know, that's the, the, behold, John 1, the Lamb of God, the point man, the finger man. That's Jesus. He wouldn't have seen him had he'd been educated by the rabbis. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because they didn't see him. Because, prove it, because they didn't see him. So where did the Lord have to send John to get educated? <laughs> yes, ma'am. He was in that Luke 180. He was in the desert until he's showing forth unto Israel. But the training of the rabbinical schools would have unfitted him for his work. Now, let me see. This is testing our faith. Can we believe just what we're reading? That's your passport. That which the rabbis regarded as superior education was in reality. You could find no greater hindrance to getting your passport than to go to their schools. Our Father in Heaven, we're, yeah, it's, it's a very difficult chore, task, uh, to try to uh, uneducate ourselves, to try to give up all the things we've been learning for so many years and to be re-educated by Heaven. But with God, all things are possible. Help us to be health evangelists after the order of Christ, to think like He thinks, do the works that He did, not because we can or will do anything without you, but through God all things are possible. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.